you this morning have been wanting me to do the monster roar. We heard Barack Obama's very scary gnashing of the teeth. Of it. So I'll do it once and once only. Watch quickly. Well done. I think that deserves a round of Thank applause. You. Well, just from me anyway. Now, let's get back to the budget and have a look at how it affects the aged care sector. The previously announced $3.7 billion aged care package is included but it only includes $577 million in new funding. The package includes measures to almost double home care assistance and improve pain conditions for aged care workers over five years. To discuss what this means, we're joined by the Chief Executive of the Council of the Aging, Ian Yates in Canberra, and Dr David Knox, who's a senior partner at Mercer Superannuation Consultants, who's here in the studio with us in Melbourne. Good morning. Good morning. I'll start with you, David Knox. Now, there are some key changes that the government has made to superannuation, including uh, reducing the cap that sure. of super contributions that older Australians can put into their super fund for two years, as well as the uh, tax contribution rate will go up as well for richer Australians? Sure. Yes, th those, those are the two big changes. Uh, for those over 50, the amount of concessional contributions have been halved from 50,000 to 25,000. And for those earning more than 300,000, the tax rate on their contributions has been doubled from 15 to 30 per cent. Now, what this really represents is more changes to super. Uh, I think what it means is people are going to have to review their superannuation strategy. We need to recognise two things. Firstly, that superannuation is about long-term investment. And therefore, as we tinker with the rules consistently, people start to lose confidence in the system. That's not a good outcome. Secondly, though, we also need to recognise that super continues to be a tax-effective investment. Even high-income earners at 30% tax on their contributions, that is less than their 46.5% tax on normal income. So everybody is getting a tax break on super. Ian Yates, if I can bring you in in Canberra, are these changes likely to impact in uh, your field, given that if people have uh, less super, they might in end up more reliant on aged care services? Well, Karina, I think that people who are near retirement will be upset about the change in the cap. Uh, they would have been planning on it, um, and I agree with David. One of the things that our constituency tell us all the time is that they don't like the rules changing. Um, people will have made provisions uh, put and, and invested in super, made plans, uh, despite the fact that they've lost money in super over recent years. So this will affect their confidence and certainly it affects people's uh, retirement incomes and therefore will affect their capacity to contribute through user fees to aged care. David Knox, we're talking about a really small percentage of people that are affected by these changes though, aren't we? Um, not really. We're talking about everyone over age 50. Um, and when do people have the capacity to contribute to their retirement? It's when some of their mortgage costs, their education costs, their family costs have been reduced. And that tends to be when you're over 50. So it's when you're over 50, you have the capacity to save. You're also closer to retirement, so you're more interested in saving. It's you know, only 5, 10, 15 years away. It's not 30 years away. So people are saying, I better put more money aside. The halving of the caps and the constant tinkering with the rules will mean people say, this is too hard. I'm just going to get out of super and I'm going to do something else. And in the long term, that's not a good outcome for the economy. Yeah, and so just, just take us through why that isn't a good outcome for the economy. Well, one of the things that could do is we may end up seeing more money invested in, in uh, for instance, negatively geared property. And if more money goes into negatively geared property, then there'll be pressure on housing affordability. We've already got too many resources in our economy in the housing sector. We actually want more investments across the board, which is what superannuation funds do, including investments in infrastructure. Ian Yates, I just want to ask you about the aged care funding. So the $3.7 billion that was announced in April is there, but only $577 million in new funding over five years has been included. Is that a worry? Uh, those are the figures that, uh, that the government gave us on the 20th of April. Um, the initial investments are small, but over the, over the lifetime of this package, uh, government contributions and user contributions both increase. Uh, so you've got to look at it as an overall package. Also, there is a substantial amount of redirected funding, uh, some of which is very sensible. The shifts in uh, dementia funding, for example, have been welcomed. Uh, by us and by our colleagues in Alzheimer's Australia. And the 1.6 billion that the government projects 
uh, will be recovered uh, through changes in the uh, aged care funding instrument uh, would have normally gone back into the budget bottom line which blew out by 2.3 billion uh, in the mid-year economic forecast uh, but the government has put that back into aged care reform so we welcome that this is a substantial start uh, to implementing the Productivity Commission's recommendations. It doesn't go far enough, you're right, in a number of areas. It doesn't go far enough financially, it doesn't go far enough uh, in stopping rationing of aged care, uh, but it's a big start uh, and we'll be working with the government to see the full implementation of those Productivity Commission recommendations. Ian Yates in Canberra, thank you. David Knox from Mercer, thank you for your time this morning. It's well. a pleasure. Okay, let's go to news just coming in this morning. A teenage girl has been injured in a schoolyard assault at Caboolture, north of Brisbane. An ambulance spokeswoman says the 14-year-old girl has stab wounds to her head, back and neck. She's been taken to the Royal Brisbane Hospital and we'll update you on the story as we get more details. Now for the weather.